It doesn't look too scary. It's time for the traveling wheel. It looks like my book has a booger on it. He's ready. Go for it. Get me something good. I only went in for two things. I'm trying to do something. <laughs> Hey everybody, so today is really, really exciting. It is the start of the 72 hours in the haunted house and I've been dying and waiting for this for weeks. I'm so excited that it's finally here. I don't know 100% what I am going to be starting with. The sprints have not started yet, so I will definitely be doing my first roll and sharing you sharing that with you guys very, very soon, but I can't wait. I have a huge stack of books that I want to get to, and some of them are quite short, so I think that I can get through quite a lot. I don't have a set goal of number of books that I want to read in The Haunted House, but I'm thinking a lot. I want to get a lot of books done, so my goal is at least five, but I would preferably rather get like 10 to 7 to 10 books done. We'll see how that goes but I can't wait to kick off this weekend with you guys and get to some good reading and hopefully find some new favorite horror. So let's go see what my first spin is. Okay guys so before the 72 hours begins and we are stuck in this haunted house and the sun goes down. I figured I should show you that I have found a spot away from what appears to be most of the ghost. I think we're going to be good in this room for the 72 hours. I think we can hide away and we're going to do our first spin to see what I'm going to be reading to stay away from the ghost. So I'll just show you one of the little monsters though that's going to be hanging out in this room with us. There are a few monsters in here, but I think I would rather deal with monsters than ghosts, so I'll take it. But our first little monster that's going to be hanging out with us. It doesn't look too scary. It doesn't look too scary, although, I mean, look at those. Look at those. Terrifying. So let's go ahead and do our first spin. See what we get. I'm a little nervous, no lie. Oop, 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 oop. Okay. So we ended up with Haunted House. I think that that's going to work out pretty nicely. I've got a couple of choices for that. Okay, so I have a couple of options for Haunted House prompt, and I think I'm going to let my patrons pick what we're going to be starting with for the night. One of them is Spite House by John Compton. This is a new release that I've heard really good things about, and it's the Literally Dead Book Club pick. I've also got um, These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall, which is a quick young adult horror. Although I've read from before and really enjoyed, I've got Fullcroft Ghost by Darcy Coates that I could read. And then I think the last one that I'm going to let them pick from is is the new T. Kingfisher that's actually going to be coming out way later. A House with Good Bones, I think is what it's called. And that one doesn't come out for a while, but it's an arc that I really need to get to. So I'm going to put up a poll for my patrons. Let's see what they pick. And I will let you know once the 72 hours start what I'm going to be reading. So we have our own perfect ambiance going on outside. There's supposed to be severe weather tonight. So I'm just going to hang out and pray that my internet just keeps for the rest of the evening, but my patrons have decided my first read and it is going to be A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This is one of, this is her newest release that is going to be coming out, I believe at the end of March, and it is a gothic story about a woman that decides to go back home and live with her mother, but she's noticing that her mother is just not quite who she remembered her being, and there's more sinister things to the house than she can ever remember when growing up. It's, I've heard, really creepy. A lot of people said it, it really freaked them out. And after loving Hollow Places, but just really not finding a T. Kingfisher that I truly connected with since then, I'm very, very, very hopeful that this will be the one for me. So I'm going to try to get all of that read tonight as quickly as I can, because I would love to spin again. I've got a long drive. I still got to go to work in the morning, so I definitely need an audiobook for in the morning. But we have just kicked off our first sprint, and I'm going to get to reading. So it's 7.47 and we're about an hour and 45 minutes into the readathon and I am 42% of the way into A House with Good Bones. So far, I'm liking it. It's the most similar to Hollow Places, which is my favorite T. Kingfisher that I've read. 
and it's doing a very good job of giving you little snippets of creepy things but not going too far into it. The main character is not immediately jumping to something supernatural which I like. I think that it's doing that part very well. She is trying a little bit too hard in my opinion to be super super quirky and I don't necessarily need it to lean that heavily into the quirky weird but I think that it's going to end up making sense to her and her mom's characters. So I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm interested. I will say not a whole heck of a lot has happened in the first 42%. Like I said, we're getting little snippets here and there, but not a lot is going on. So I'm hoping once I hit the halfway point, it really starts to rev up and get moving. But I'm interested. I'm not overly thrilled or horrified, but I'm interested. I'm not any that much further. I'm at 73%. This is not really an update. But if this book goes in the direction that that sentence just indicated it might go, I'm not going to like it. What? No. Okay. A, a monster is here and I have finished A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. This one lost me a little bit, unfortunately. I was enjoying it a little bit bored but intrigued until we got to about the 60-70% arc. Then something happened that just completely lost me. I just found like it came out of the blue. There was a lot of logic issues for me in the end and I ended up really not enjoying that. I can kind of see where she was going and see why she did it that way. Can't even give you more than that because it would be a massive spoiler of the twist of the story. So I can't even tell you why I didn't like it other than for me it kind of came out of nowhere. I felt like the story was trying to do a lot and there was a little bit too much going on for such a short story. And maybe I would have liked it a little bit better if it had been longer and there had been more time and lead up given to a lot of these things, but I just felt like we were so focused on plants and bugs and things like that. And then all of a sudden we've got all of these different things that we're starting to talk about and it was just Again, too much in too short of a period of time. I think that if you liked The Hollow Places and you are not a super logic-driven reader, then this could still work for you. If you're somebody that likes twists that are shocking and, which I guess it wasn't shocking, it was just surprising, then you could really like this story. It is creepy. It does have some good creepy elements to it. So I think that there will be an audience for this book. It just wasn't for me. On my gut feeling, I think it's going to be a higher two. It's well written and the beginning I can give credit to the buildup and the creepiness factor. It just lost me in the end. So I think it's going to be a high two. It could end up being a low three, but my gut says probably not, but we'll just see what the spreadsheet says once I put it through there. And then we need to do our next sprint and find out what I'm going to be reading next. I'm a little scared, but let's Let's flip over to the wheel. Okay, the wheel is in a slightly different location now, but we're going to do the best we can. Ooh, sci-fi. Okay, I can work with sci-fi. Okay, so for sci-fi, I have a couple of different options. I'm looking to see how long this audiobook is because I might end up doing that. So the Mirror Grant audiobook is only like two hours long for Square Cubed. And I really do need to read that one. I could also do Final Girls by Mira Grant. And then I have Monster Island by David Wellington, which is a zombie post-apocalyptic type thing, which I think could be considered sci-fi as well. So I'm not really sure which one of these I want to go with. I really only got about an hour and a half left of reading time tonight. I feel like this backlight is a little too strong. But I've really only got like an hour and a half of reading time left tonight, so I'm not sure if I want to commit to another like longer book because this one is a little over 200 pages. But the Mira Grant, I don't want to not complete and then not have an audiobook for tomorrow, if that makes sense. So I'm a little undecided, but I'm going to think about it. And once I have started whatever I decide, I will come back and let you know. I'll take one. Chapter 1. Inclusion. 1.1. When the first holes ripped in the fabric of reality, and the first interlopers appear, looming out of the sudden unseasonable fog.
All right, friends, it's time for the traveling wheel, but first let me talk to you about Square Cubed. I finished this on my way to work this morning. It's about two young girls that there's a rift that opens in the world and sends one of them to one side of the rift and one of them stays on our side of the rift. It involves a lot of physics and things like that. I ended up liking this one. I think I'm going to give it a three star, but I was expecting from it being a Mira Grant book for the focus to be more on the science and things like that. Instead, it read a little bit more Sean and McGuire wayward children style where the focus was more on the two sisters. It's very, very short and it does something that I don't like where all of the stuff that I was interested in happened in dialogue, like all of the discussions about the sister and the world that she got sent to and what was there and what happened. It was just all done through a conversation. And I don't love that. Even in a novella, I want you to show me all of that stuff, or even if you have to show it quickly rather than just talking about it. But it was fun. It was fast paced and I would recommend it. I'm about to head home and I need a book to listen to on my way. So let's spin the wheel and see what I get. And hopefully I can find an audiobook to listen to on my way home. Okay, funky angle, but the traveling wheel. All right, we got Slasher. So let's see if I can find a Slasher audiobook. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with Video Night by Adam Caesar. Uh, Cassidy read this one and said she really liked it. It's about alien body snatchers, and I believe it is a slasher. So I think I'm going to bite the bullet and pay for that one and give this a shot. It's only 8 hours and 22 minutes on single speed, so I think I can get it done pretty quickly. Okay, I'm officially home. A little bit of an angle change now, but I wanted to update you guys on what I'm thinking so far of Video Night by Adam Caesar. This is a slasher with aliens type story, and I've got about two hours left of the audiobook. I'm on chapter nine. It's okay so far. I'm wondering if the slasher type stories just aren't really going to be my thing because they don't tend to have a lot of plot to them. There's usually some kind of gimmick at the beginning that sets off the whole thing and then it's just a bunch of people dying in grotesque ways until the story ends. So a lot of times they just lose me a little bit because it's the same thing happening over and over and over again. And I'm slightly worried that that's going to be the case with this. However, it's entertaining. The characters are insufferable as they should be in a slasher B-movie type book. And excited to continue it and interested to see where it goes. But my thoughts at the moment are kind of meh. So we'll see where we end up. I need to finish this. And I've finally gotten back on sprints with everybody now. So... I'm going to go listen to some more and hopefully we don't get another three star read, but that's kind of what it's shaping up to look like. Okay, so please ignore the little nest that I have going on behind me. I have not moved since I got home because we're sprinting, but I have now finished Video Night by Adam Caesar and I think this is going to be a lower three star. Cassidy is just like rolling over right now, but I'm wondering if this type of story at least audibly is not going to be for me. It's not really a slasher. I do want to put that out there. It is more of a like, I don't know, the slasher kind of vibes where people are getting hacked off, but it's not an actual slasher. And I don't know, I just, it loses a lot of the um, mystery for me when I already know it's going to happen and it's very repetitive. And I think, like I said, that works in like a visual format and it might work better me reading it with my eyes, but there was never a character that I was like rooting for and wanting to know how they were going to survive and beat the monster or whatever. So it just didn't totally grip me, but I mean, it wasn't a bad book and I can definitely see where it would have its audience. So I think that one's going to be a lower three star. That's okay. So we need to roll for our next prompt. Okay. It's time for our next spin. I'm a little terrified, but let's go. Wow, that one went for a really long time. <laughs> yep, that's not happening. So that is the one prompt that I said that I would use a respin for. So we're not doing cosmic. Let's spin it again. Ooh, psychological. Okay, I can work with that. Let me go look at some of my options. Probably going to give my Patreons a choice and I'll come back and let you know. So for our next prompt, we got a psychological and I asked my Patreons to vote on a couple of different options and they were very nice to me and gave me Blanky by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a super, super, super short novella. We're talking like, well, I guess it's more of a short story. 
It is 74 pages long. It is about a dad that has recently lost his daughter and he buried her favorite blanket with her. But when he hears baby noises coming from her nursery, he realizes that the blanket is still there. It sounds good. I don't know. I've never read a Keelan Patrick Burke before, but I've really, really wanted to. So Cassidy gifted this one to me for my birthday, I think. And I'm really, really excited to read it. I need a short, fast paced read. And I'm hoping that this is the one to just kind of like get me moving. So let's talk about Blanky. I really enjoyed this one. I think it's actually going to end up being a high four potentially five star. I haven't put it through my rating system yet, but this was really good. It's very short. It gets straight to the point. This is following a man in his grief, and it is very much so about grief and the horrific things and ways that people have to sometimes process that. Like not everybody is able to just process and move on and let time heal them. Some people are so stuck in their grief and their guilt that they just can't pull themselves out of it. That's very much so what this story is about. So be aware of that going in. It is a very, very graphic depiction of grief. And I, I've not personally experienced this kind of grief, but I feel like it was very well done. I could feel the character's emotions and what he was going through, good and bad. I think that the different, the two warring things in this book about grief versus the blanket were also really well done. I liked the ambiguous ending. I don't really know that the very, very, very end was entirely necessary necessary, like the last page and a half. I think that that is more to leave the end of the story up to the reader's interpretation, but I don't necessarily know that we needed that. But that's my really only gripe about this is I'm not sure that we needed that particular ending. I think we could have ended it like second to last page. But overall, really enjoyed this one. So happy that I read it. And now I'm excited to hopefully get to more Keelan Patrick Burke maybe this weekend because this was a great time. It's super quick. I recommend it to those that don't have triggers with grief because that is very heavily described in here, but it's a win. So we need to do my next spin. And this is fun. I'm getting to do a lot of spins this weekend and it's just awesome to be able to do so many spins. So let me flip you guys around and we'll see what I'm getting next. Okay, let's see what I get for my next spin. Um, <laughs> I think that landed on Haunted House. I mean, it kind of got stuck, but the way it was stuck was with the pointer more toward this way. So I think that we're going to end up on the Haunted House prompt again. Okay, the next prompt, we got Haunted House, and I think I'm going to do Full Croft Ghosts. I have not yet gotten to do a Darcy Coates for this readathon, and I really, really wanted to get to one. Cassidy read this one a few months ago and really enjoyed it. I think it was either close to a five star or a really high four star. I can't remember, but she had a great time with it, and I've been wanting to get to it. It's very short. The very last part of the book is not like part of the book. It's a bunch of short stories. So I think this is only 236 pages. It's about two kids that when their mother's hospitalized, they get sent to stay with their elderly grandparents, but something's being hidden away and kept out of sight and they can't shake the feeling that something is watching them. Violent storm cuts off all of their contact to the outside world and they have to find a way to save themselves from their erratic grandparents and the ghosts that haunt Fullcroft House. Sounds really good. I'm curious. We've got creepy grandparents and we've got ghosts. I'm here for it. So I'm going to start this and I'll probably check in with you guys about halfway. on page 96 of Fullcroft Ghost. It's around the halfway point and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's got the Darcy slow burn. I don't feel like she just jumps in there and immediately starts with the jump scares. There's a lot of like creepy buildup that I'm really enjoying. The kids read their appropriate ages. The 12 year old son maybe reads a little bit older, but that's the intention. So they're not like stupid, annoying kids, but they're also still kids. 
The grandparents have something to hide. I don't know what they're hiding yet, but they're definitely suspicious. Nobody is that nice while also being that strict. Like, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. But I want to find out what the heck is up with the creepy old people. So I'm going to go back to reading, but just wanted to give you a quick update that I'm having a great time. I'm going to show you this airtight container only because I don't want you to accidentally lock yourself in at 15 years old. Hmm. I don't buy it. So we have just discovered that if it will focus, it looks like my book has a booger on it. I got this book from Pingo and it, it does not look clean. So our choices are finish the book and pretend it doesn't exist or burn it. Right now I'm leaning toward burning it. I forgot to bring my tripod in here, but this is just going to have to work. I have finished Fallcroft Ghost. It was actually shorter than I thought. It was 193 pages instead of 230 something pages. I really had a good time with this one. I didn't absolutely love the end, but that's a pretty common thing with Darcy Coates' books. She does have a very cozy ending style, and a lot of times it just loses a little bit of the logic for me because of the way that the story is set up. Oftentimes the endings don't always match what I feel like motivations would, if that makes sense. But overall, I still really enjoyed this one. The haunted house aspect was not nearly as present as I thought it would be, but it's still definitely a haunted house story. I liked the creepy grandma and grandpa thing. I thought that that was really well done and I had a good time with it. So I think this one's going to come out to be a four star and then we need to do another spin to find out what I'm reading next. Also, as you can tell, I didn't burn the book. I decided to finish it. I only had like 20 pages left. So we're going to maybe put it on the shelf and just not think about the potential booger on the top of it. Okay, our next spin. Well, that made a terrible noise. Um, looks like we got gothic. Okay, so it looks like we got gothic, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to read for this one. I could do Spite House by Johnny Compton. That's one that I've been really wanting to get to, but it's kind of long. It's 300 and something pages, and I am trying to get through some of my shorter books that I wouldn't normally pick up, like, in the general week during this readathon because I tend to gravitate toward the longer or at least 300 plus page books. So I'm going to take a look and see if any of the shorter ones that I have would work for Gothic. And if not, I will definitely be doing Spy House because I've really been looking forward to that one. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Realizing as I went to go download Spy House that apparently I didn't download it before NetGalley archived it and I don't have access to it anymore. And because now it's out, and popular. Everyone has checked it out from the library and I don't want to do an audiobook. I want to read with my eyeballs right now. So may do These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. It is a young adult horror that I could have done for the Haunted House pick but decided to go with Fullcroft Ghost instead. So I might end up doing that one just simply because it's young adult. It's kind of long, but I really need to get to it. And I've read the two other like companion books in that world and really enjoyed them and thought they read quickly. So I may just go with that unless Kaylee or Lexi can give me another recommendation in the next like 10 minutes. So I am currently flagging, but I'm doing the best I can to stay up a little while later and get another maybe 25% done of these fleeting shadows. It's 11.47 my time, but I did have to get up and go to work this morning on like four hours of sleep. So I'm tired. But anyway, I am 25% into these fleeting shadows. It's about a girl that something happened to her when she was seven years old. Her family fled the family home, the manor called Harrow, and now they've returned and she's been offered the position as the mistress of the house essentially and there's some creepy stuff going on there's a lot of rich family drama I think that's going to be happening the book is doing the one thing that I absolutely hate at the moment though which is giving you all of the setting and lore world building whatever you want to call it in dialogue and that drives me up the freaking wall I want the character to find out things I mean, it can be through overheard conversations and things like that, but I don't want somebody to just sit down and have a conversation with another character where they just tell you absolutely everything that you need to know. There's going to be times where info dump is a thing, and I don't mind info dump. I just don't like it when it all comes in dialogue where a character's just telling the character what they need to know. It just feels lazy to me, like you didn't want to spend the time to show the reader 
these things and to build it up that you just wanted to be able to get it out there in the easiest way possible. Anyway, it aggravates me a little. It's not enough usually to ruin a story unless it's consistent, but I was noticing it um, pretty heavily at about 25%, so I just figured I would jump on and let you know. I'm going to go back to reading and attempt to not fall asleep, and hopefully I'll be able to do another update for you guys before I go to bed tonight, but it's nearing midnight and I make no promises, so if not, I'll see you in the morning. everyone today it it is currently 10 in the morning and I'm finally kind of up moving feeling a little bit more human had my coffee and I'm gonna get back into these bleeding shadows I got to about 50% last night still feel about the same that I did yesterday when I was updating you guys it's okay it's a bit over the top it doesn't really feel like the other two books that I've read that are kind of companions to this one so we'll see how it ends up but I'm hoping to do a really long sprint next time because I want to go to the bookstore and maybe get a little McDonald's for lunch and so I need an audiobook that I can listen to on my way there and on my way back so we need to do another spin, even though I'm not quite completely done with these fleeting shadows. I need to find out what I'm going to be reading next. So let me flip you guys over and let's hope that whatever I spin, I can get an audiobook for. Okay, let's see what we get. Ooh, spooky word. I can definitely work with that. So I got Spooky Word and I've been waiting on this prompt because I really wanted to read Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman. I don't really know what this book is about. I know that the cover is super cool and I know that a lot of people have been talking about how much they're enjoying it. It's supposed to be super creepy and really weird and I just, I want to get to it. I also have it as an ebook and an audiobook, so that works out really well. And I may, if I like the audiobook when I'm driving to Barnes & Noble, pick up a physical copy because it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's my plan when we head to the bookstore is I'm going to listen to Ghost Eaters. Really quickly, I wanted to show you guys what I got at the bookstore because I went a little crazier than I meant to. I only went in for two things and I had like five or six things in my hands and I was like, no, no, you have gift cards. Just wait, buy it online like you said you were going to do. So the two that I went in for first is Spite House by Johnny Compton. This one is a new release. It is the Literally Dead book club for this month, and I've really been wanting to get to it. I thought I had the ebook, but I didn't, so I decided to pick up a physical copy. And then the other one that I went in for is Ghost Eaters by Ch Clay McLeod Chapman. This one I'm currently listening to, and it's kind of weird, and I'm excited about it. That cover, can you see that? I just, I absolutely love this cover. So I knew that if I enjoyed it, I definitely wanted a physical copy. And then while I was at it, um, Cassidy and Kaylee talked about loving Mary so much. And so I decided to go ahead and pick up a copy of Mary. And they also had the new Alex North out just a little bit early. And I loved the shadows, so I decided that I wanted to pick up Angel Maker while I was there as well. So that is my little book haul for you guys. I bought too many things, but here we are. This is the way life is. It's who I am as a person, and I'm not going to make excuses for it anymore. So I need to get going because I have got like 40 minutes to go through McDonald's and get home before the sprint ends. Okay, guys, so I am about to eat my lovely nutritious ramen noodles, and I wanted to give you an update because I'm a little over halfway through 
Ghost Eaters by Clay McCoy Chapman, and I'm really enjoying this one. The beginning was a little bit slow, and I wasn't sure if we were going to get actual ghost or whether it was going to be more of a discussion of grief, and it still is very much so a discussion of grief and addiction, but things have started to happen, and I'll just leave it at that. The office scene where she goes into her new job if you've read this, and then you'll know what I'm talking about, was so creepy and so well done, and I could just feel her panic, and I loved it. Um, so I'm really enjoying this. Can't wait to get back to listening to it, and I think that the narrator's doing a really good job too, so I am excited to continue this one. And then really quickly, I wanted to tell you guys my thoughts on these fleeting shadows. It feels like it's going to be a two and a half star. There were a lot of moments in this that could have been really good. There were a lot of really good gothic ideas and the idea of the other and kind of the twist to the story I thought was really interesting. But unfortunately, this is still very much so a YA book at heart, and it's just not my thing anymore. And so I found myself either rolling my eyes or getting a little bit annoyed at some of the decisions the characters were making, some of the word choices, and just the overall lack of really world building. Like the atmosphere was good, but I just, I, I don't know, maybe it's the fantasy reader in me, but I'm wanting more information. Like, how did this thing get here? How did it come to be? Like, I, I, they tell you a little bit of that, but it just is not quite enough for me. And again, I think that's partially because it's not the focus of the book and partially because it's a YA, they don't tend to go into that much detail on the intricacies of stuff. And that's okay. It is sapphic. The romance, I just, it, it's just there. Like, it's fine. Um, but... Overall, I mean, it's okay. A two and a half sounds harsh, but it's more than anything just not the book for me, I don't think. The other books that I've read by her had something else going on with them, and gothic stories are just not something I've read a lot of anyway, so I'm not sure what I like about them. Again, really good ideas. Execution, not my favorite. Anyway, so I'm going to go, and I'm going to eat my ramen and listen to more of Ghost Eaters, and I'll check back in with you guys once I finished Ghost Eaters and we can do the next spin. I have just finished Ghost Eaters by Clay McCoy Chapman. And ooh, where, where do I start on this one? So first, let me say that this is not a story with likable characters. This is a story about grief and addiction and toxic relationships. It is disturbing in both its mental images and its pacing. It's not a story that is just going to have linear pacing where you understand what's going on from start to finish. It does have a slow buildup so that you can kind of understand the backstory behind everything that's going on and see the descent that happens in this book. So just kind of want to preface that because I was reading a couple of the Goodreads reviews and a lot of people were DNFing it like, 30, 40% saying it just wasn't what they expected. There was no likable characters, nobody for them to root for. That's not what this story is and it's not what it's supposed to be. So I guess I just kind of wanted to blanket statement that for those that are thinking of reading this book. I loved it. I thought that it was extremely well done. The pacing is all over the place, especially you have something that's really slow in the beginning and then it just kind of revs up and doesn't stop until the very end. It's intentional. It's supposed to be a descent into madness and a picture of what addiction can do to someone. Aaron is not a likable character. Tobias is not a likable character. Silas is not a likable character. You're not supposed to be rooting for them. You're supposed to be slightly horrified by the decisions that they're making and the things that they're having to go through. <laughs> and I'm really sorry for Ollie growling in the background of this serious discussion, but I can't make him stop. So anyway, ignore him. <sighs> hey, can you not do that while I'm trying to film a clip? He just doesn't, he has to be the center of attention. But anyway, I loved this. I thought it was extremely well done. I thought it did everything that it set out to do. It was disturbing. Some of the language in here was a choice. I will give you that. There's one particular point where he's 
says something, one of the ghosts is like, gonna get your coochie coo or something like that. So it really, there was a couple of absurd remarks like that, but for the most part, I just found everything very intentional, even if you didn't like it. So this is either a very, very high four star or potentially another five star read. I've got to put it through my spreadsheet, but my gut says that this could possibly be a five star and I'm, I'm here for it. Apparently grief horror and the horror that is intended to punch at your emotions really works for me. So I'm learning throughout this readathon what is working for me and what doesn't work for me, which was exactly what I intended and hoped that it would do. So anyway, probably a five-star read. Loved it. So glad that a good cover finally has good bones. But with that being said, we need to spin the wheel, see what I get next, and I need to pick a new book. Okay, so I got Creature Feature. I did have to re-spin, you guys probably saw that, because I landed on Haunted House again. And as much as I love Darcy, and as much as I want to read episode 13, which is a Haunted House story, read a lot of Haunted House stories, so I think I just kind of want to move into something different. And I have not gotten Creature Feature yet. So, I really wanted to get Snowy Setting, but I don't think that that's going to happen. I asked Cassidy because I really want to read Final Girls by Mira Grant. And this really probably fits more in the sci-fi or psychological prompts, but she said that there are creatures... What did she say? She said there's zombie-like things, which she would consider a creature feature. So I'm going to consider it a creature feature as well. I briefly started it because I thought I was going to use it instead of Square Cubed, um, but decided to go ahead and... Ollie, baby, stop. Um, decided to go ahead because I needed an audiobook. So I'm excited to read that one. It's not super, super terribly long. Cassidy really enjoyed it. So I'll check back in once I know a little bit more. It is currently 7.30. Um, so we're a little over the 48 hour mark now. We're coming like 49 and a half hours into this thing. And as you guys know, I'm not going to have all day tomorrow. So I got to get reading. All right, so I just finished Final Girls. This is not a creature feature, but we're going with it because we've said, if the attempt was made in good faith, it still counts. And the attempt was made in good faith. But I had a good time with this one. It's following a woman who is being offered this exclusive to an institute that puts you and another person in a scenario to help like deal with past traumas. And she gets put in a scenario and it ends up going very, very badly. This is very similar to Cabin in the Woods, if you've ever seen that movie. My only complaint was there were a few points where it felt a little disjointed, where it's flipping back and forth between the pod scenario and the present scenario that I wish was a little bit more clear. And I do wish it was just longer because I feel like we could have done a lot more setup and then a lot more time in the pods and kind of flipping back and forth. And it would have done really well. It was like 112 pages. I think it would have been served better as like 250 to 300 pages something like that. And I think I'm going to end up giving it a four star maybe. But now that we're done with that, I need to spin again. And David is absolutely freaking obsessed with the wheel. So he has said that now that he's here, all wheel spins must come through him. So we're going to grab him and spin the wheel. You cannot spin it yet. You cannot spin it yet. I got to put the camera on it so you can spin it. Hang on. Let me flip around because he's about to spin it without us. He's ready. Go for it. Get me something good. Oh, oh. No, it goes backwards. No, that is terrible. <laughs> I don't want to read any more haunted house. Ugh. I thought We're gonna figure it out. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say I was gonna use a respin. I feel like I should be allowed to use a respin, but apparently it's just meant to be because that also landed on haunted house. Apparently it's meant to be. I don't know what I'm reading for this. I'm done with haunted house stories. I've read so many of them and I don't know what I'm reading for this. I think I am going to bite the bullet and read episode 13 by Craig DeLue. This is a newer one that's come out that's mixed media haunted house story. I think it's a 
about ghost hunters that are going into a haunted house to try to get real footage of ghosts. And that's usually a story that interests me. Because it's mixed media, the audiobook is actually only like nine and a half hours. And so what I'm hoping that means is that this is not as long as it seems. So we're gonna try to start that tonight a little after 10. And so I'm hoping I can get a really good chunk of it done before I go to bed tonight, but we'll see. Okay, we're checking in really early because I'm going to soft DNF episode 13. I did make it a solid like 85 pages before I decided to do this. It's just very slow. And I've asked a couple of people and they were like, once you hit the halfway point, the story really starts to change and it takes some weird turns and it gets really good, but it's like 11 o'clock at night and I don't have brain power, honestly, to get halfway before it gets good. I need something that's gonna keep me awake and engaged. I do plan to go back and continue this and finish it at some point when I can take a little bit more time with it and not feel like I'm in a hurry. So we need to do another spin and find out what my next read's gonna be. So I'll get David to to spin for us. Hang on, let's let's get you where people can see. Okay, go. Supernatural was what it was on, and it landed on Haunted House again. So we're not doing that. Spin again. Just put it back. <laughs> Just put it back on Supernatural. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna we're gonna allow it. We're gonna allow it. Thank you for your spinning abilities. So we landed on Supernatural. Um, not a hundred percent sure what I'm gonna be reading for this one, but I'm leaning toward either small horrors. I may have a couple more like smaller ones in the office that I'm gonna go look at. So I'll let you guys know once I decide, but I'm leaning toward this one. It is 50 short stories by Darcy Coates and I need to read some short stories anyway. So I'm, I'm leaning toward this one. So it is really, really late, which is why I look like this. It is currently 1240 in the morning on Sunday and I'm currently reading Small Horrors. I'm about 100 pages in, which is not quite halfway, but close, and I'm getting really sleepy, so I figured I would go ahead and update you guys before I went to bed. I am going to try to read a little bit more tonight. I'd like to get at least halfway. My favorite short stories so far have been The Sightless and Hazard Lights. Both of these are her kind of like creature feature type stories, and I don't feel like she's done really a full-length novel that has a creature feature feel to it. And I'm curious as to why, because it seems like one of the few things that she hasn't done, and those were really good. One of them reminded me of Quiet Place, the movie that you have to be quiet because of all the creatures, and then the other one was just really good. And I'm enjoying them so far. So these honestly though are a little bit too short for me. Some of them are two pages, some of them are three or four pages, but I don't think there's been one over like a five page story so far. I'm always wanting more from them. I'm always wanting something further. So I feel like if they were closer to 10 to 20 pages, I would be enjoying this a lot more. I was going to do my thriller spin tonight, but I'm not going to finish this tonight, so I'll have to pick it up a little bit in the morning. Um, so I'll just do my thriller spin in the daylight. Um, I am going to try to get a little bit more of this done before I completely pass out, which is probably not going to be far away. And I think Lexi's going to be hosting sprints pretty bright early in the morning, so... I want to attempt to make it to those before I'm out for most of the day. So it is the next morning, around nine-ish, I guess, and we have got a little under 12 hours left of the readathon. I need to go ahead and pick another book. But first, I did finish Small Horrors. I didn't love it. I think it's going to end up being a three-star. It was just okay. The short, the stories were too short for me to really love them. There were some that I greatly enjoyed, but three or four pages just wasn't long enough for me and most of them were not a favorite. So anyway, that's fine, but we need to find out what thriller I'm going to be reading today because since it's the last day, I do want to get a thriller in and we've had to redo the wheel. It's looking a little worse for wear, but let's see what prompt I get. I think the only ones that I don't want to get, maybe one by one romantic and possibly domestic. I think the rest of them I'm okay with, so let's see what we get. Crime. Okay, I think I can make crime work. 
So crime police procedural just means that there's a police presence in the story. So it doesn't have to be fully from the police's point of view. If there is a police like point of view presence to the book, then I'm going to count it. One of my options is Wayward Pines or Pines by Blake Crouch. It's pretty short. I've been really wanting to get to it. And I think he's an FBI agent. Um, I wanted to look and see some of Alex North's books have a crime police presence to them. And I've really been wanting to read Angel Maker. So I'm going to look at that one as well. But those are the two just off the top of my head that I can think of that I might want to get to. Um, another one would be like The Hypnotist by Lars Kepler. I have that one as well that I could try. So I've got a couple of different options. I'm going to go see what I'm in the mood for and go grab it. Okay, taking the dogs out really quick before we have to get leaving for today, but I just wanted to update you guys really quickly on Angel Maker by Alex North. I'm only about 30% in so far, but I knew that it'd be a little while before I was able to update again, so I wanted to give you guys some basic thoughts. So far, it's interesting, but it's been a lot slower moving and starting than some of his other books, and I'm not bored per se, but I do find myself kind of zoning out and not overly engaged by the story. The beginning was really interesting, but then we kind of went a little off from there. So I'm hoping it'll start to pick up now. Something has just happened and I'll keep you guys posted on my final thoughts. Okay, so that's a wrap, folks. The readathon is officially over and I can't decide whether I'm sad or glad to be finally getting some sleep. But before we wrap this up, let's talk about the Angel Maker by Alex North. I will say that I am slightly disappointed in this one. I loved the shadows, but this just moved significantly slower than I was expecting it to. I don't know whether it's because I'm absolutely exhausted or if it's the book's fault, but I found myself zoning out a lot, missing things, and I just wasn't engaged in it. And I think I actually may at some point need to go back and kind of reread it just to make sure that it was the book and not me. But overall, it's going to kind of come out as a three star. It's well written, but it just was not very engaging. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed in it. But anyway, that wraps up the 72 hours in the haunted house. Thank you so much to Covers with Cassidy, Rise Reading Corner, Kaylee's Books, and Books with Lexi. They helped make this weekend just so much fun along with all of you guys that participated, hung out with us in sprints for what felt like 72 hours straight. But I managed to read over 1,500 pages this weekend and got a ton done that I am so very happy with. Found two five-star reads, so I could not be more pleased with how this weekend turned out. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Just a quick reminder that I have a Patreon. Link to join is down in the description box below, as well as you can find links to my Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads. If you guys liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> can I put that in the vlog? <laughs> I'm trying to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead.